This is Toffee TV and we've got a new game called Toffee Picks. Get over to toffeepicks.com now to play. We have got a guaranteed prize pot of £500 that we'll be giving away every game. We'll ask you some questions about this week's game. See you answered the most right and you could win a share of £500. Don't forget, it's free, but you have to be over 18. Terms and conditions apply. Play responsibly. We'll be playing a game every week on our new Toffee Picks show over on our YouTube channel. Can you beat us? We'll see you in the game. Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the player ratings. Everton nil, Manchester City 2A. <sighs> Battling performance. Um, but sadly, was not enough, was it? It wasn't enough to beat a very, very good Manchester City side. Two late goals, very reminiscent of the quarter final defeat against Manchester United in the League Cup. Two late goals in that as well. Um, Disappointing, very, very disappointing, just because thought we were going to get into extra time and then maybe something would happen. Um, yeah, yeah. It, strange one, because I think a lot of people will feel it was a good performance and are proud of the team, but ultimately it's a defeat and, more importantly, without the FA Cup. And it's, again, another year without uh, a trophy. So let's get into it. Jal Virginia and goal. I'm going to give him a nine. Because I thought he was spot on tonight. I thought I think he did early on. He did all the simple things right. His handling was spot on. Um, he didn't come for stuff that he was never going to get. And then in the second half, he obviously made one brilliant save from Sterling, and then made another really good save, which sadly led to their second go uh, their first goal. Sorry, um, I thought his kicking was really good as well. I think he's you know he's good in that area as well. Looks looks a good young modern goalkeeper. Um and that's really good. That's really good for another goalkeeper to be pushing is is really, really important. Um so fair play to him. I said before the game in, in the team news video before the game that I just I wanted to make I really hope that if we if we were to lose the game it wouldn't be down to an error from him or you know, sometimes you see that. Um I remember Ian Turner's first game. Um, yeah when he got sent off after about 20 minutes and then John Ruddy had to play the rest of the game uh, luckily enough we won it but um, and he he, he he absolutely he absolutely um, can be really proud of himself tonight he had a really really good game so I've give him uh, a 9 uh, Mason Holgate um, I think he defended quite well tonight Mason I think to be fair I think he, I think he defended quite well I'd give him a Give him a seven and a half. I think, you know, he was asked to do a job. He was asked. He didn't have to get forward because of the way we were playing. He was sort of a right back, but also like a third centre back at times. Um, I think he defended. I think he defended quite well. So I'll give him a seven and a half. Um, Luca Dean, again, I thought he did quite well. He defended well. Just a couple of times, maybe. People skipped away from him, but it didn't really happen too much. And they went into areas where really he wanted them to go. Um, I don't think don't think too many people troubled him either. So I'd give him a seven and a half as well. Um, Yeri Mina, I thought Yeri Mina was was excellent. Just putting nipping in with a toe here, a toe there. Um, I think he kept ham, uh, Jesus quite quiet. Um, was big in the air for us, um, and I think I don't even know if you could call it a mistake. But their first goal, I mentioned this on me instant match reaction, was Kevin De Bruyne just nicking that ball away from him where he really couldn't, really couldn't go in for it, and that created the space for the shot, and and obviously they scored from the rebound. Um, So, I've given him an eight. I've given him an eight. Uh, ben Godfrey, I will give him a, a nine because I just thought he was excellent tonight. I thought he was certainly the outf outfielders. Um, he just got a foot in every time. Every time he was there, every time winning big tackles. 
Um, his pace is such an important commodity now to to the team. Um, and I, I, I think that could be the partnership going forward. I really could. I could see that partnership going forward. Um, because one's got pace. One's got the aerial ability. And I, I could see that being the partnership. I think that's a well-balanced partnership. I think Michael Keane, a bit unlucky. But I think, I, me for me, Mina reads the game better and sees the danger earlier. And I think Ben Godfrey's pace and his tenacity. And actually, I thought what he was really good at tonight was keeping the ball as well. Nice little sharp um, passes inside players. Not just hoofing it away. I thought he was brilliant tonight, Ben Godfrey. I really did. I think he I think he showed tonight why he really should be in the um, the England squad. It's mad that he's not. Um, Richard Hindley saying Godfrey's the new Kevin Ratcliffe. I can see similarities there. Kevin Ratcliffe was a, a very pacey centre back and also very very um, strong in the tackle. Took no prisoners. Prisoners. Um, so I've given him a nine. I thought he was excellent, and I think that could be the partnership. I really do. I think that could be the partnership going forward. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Seamus Coleman again thought he played really well tonight. Um, thought he stuck to his task. Didn't really get as forward as maybe as much as we probably will have wanted him to. Um, but, again, he's given a job to do, isn't he? He's been given a job to do. So, I'd give Seamus uh, a seven. So I think he, he, his job was to his job was to look after that right-hand side and make sure... Um, no, I'll give him a seven and a half uh, to make sure no one, no one got past him. And very rarely anyone did get past him. You know, and that that was his role tonight. His role was more defensive. I said before the game that against uh, against Liverpool, he was going to play a similar role, and that's what he did tonight. He played a very similar role. At times, it was five across the back. More sometimes he'd go further forward. He was just an extra defender, but with that pace, it was to try and break forward. And I thought he did that role really well, and that could be a key role for him in the next couple of years, where he's not going to play every game, but or maybe in the next year, but. He could play that role of coming in and doing a man marking job. Not every single week and not obviously not against every team, but um but I think that's something he could do going forward, definitely. Um Yeah. Um Who else played? I'm trying to think. Uh Alan, uh I'll give him a seven. I think the booking which was, a, I, don't, I think it was a bit of a silly book, and I think once a player's got away from you, you can't really kick it, go to kick anyone in the back of the leg. And I think that sort of just, you get one free one, don't you, and that's your yellow card. And I think to give it up in that moment was a bit silly, because we could have done with that maybe later on in the game. Um, I think it was all right. I think he got round the pitch. I think he could have, he could have done with another one next to him with the same kind of energy. But I think he was. I think he did all right tonight. I think he was. He had to again. It's more a defensive role trying to block out passing lanes. And I think he did. I think he did all right. Uh, Andre Gomez. Um, I think. I think Gomez played quite well tonight. I think he played quite well. I think he kept the. I think he kept the ball a lot better. I wouldn't. I bet the stats will probably um, tell me otherwise. But. Um, but I thought he kept the ball a lot better. Thought he kept the ball a lot better and was strong, winning the ball back. Little snide kick now and again. Uh, used his size well, I thought. Um, and I think, yeah, I think he was. I think he did okay. I'll give him a. I'll give him a seven and a half as well. Um, I imagine some people might think he was better than that, but I'll give him a seven and a half. Um, and if you look on uh, Sofa Score, which is what a lot of people use for the ratings, he actually got a five point nine. He was actually ranked as our worst midfielder. He was actually ranked as our worst player, which is very, very strange. But I'll give him um, what did I say? Seven and a half. I'll give him a seven and a half because I thought he, I thought he, I thought he kept, as I said, I think he kept the ball up better. The one left foot cross in the first half was absolutely brilliant. Um, 
but he did he did all right he did all right um Gilfie Shigerton at seven pace of the game pace of their players pace of, I, there's one time in the second half he had the ball in the corner and he kept on trying to manipulate the ball to get a crossing and he just couldn't and I, I think that just showed you the difference with their players and our players that he couldn't even find the quality to get a crossing because their players were so quick onto what he was doing. I don't think he had a bad game. I just and I, I thought he did all right, but he could never find like enough time to play a killer ball or um or anything like that. So I've given him a seven. Um with Charlison seven as well. Worked hard, you know, worked his socks off, I think. But again, not enough quality. Not enough quality when it mattered. Um never um Never really was able to carve out a chance for himself either. Sometimes took the wrong option. But um, worked hard. Worked hard, but just didn't have that little bit extra quality that, again, you look at their players. There was one moment in the first half that I really thought sort of symbolised both teams. Richarlison had the ball and he dwelt on it for about five seconds and someone just come and took the ball off him. And that, to me, that, that to me summed up, that summed up the, the difference between the two sides. Um. Yeah. So I'll give him a seven, and Dominic Carvalho Lewin a seven as well. Again, t- held the ball up well. Some lovely little touches to bring it down and move it, but ultimately not enough. Again, worked hard, fed off scraps. Never had any real clear cut chances. Tried to win a lot of balls in the air. Um. You know, little flicks here and there, but again, not in the game enough. Obviously, I think we ended up with something like twenty six percent of possession. You know, we didn't we didn't really get into areas to hate them with Dom and Charleston. So, but I thought they both worked hard. I thought they both worked hard, but just not enough. Not enough to make any dent. Their goalie hasn't really had to make any saves. Um, so yeah. Uh, and who was the one sub of Yeah, no, he didn't do anything. So what can I give him? I can't. He wasn't on the. Was he on the pitch? Did he have any touches? I think he touched about three times. So I can't really give him anything. And that's the tale of the game, isn't it? Really, quality, quality they had on the pitch and quality they brought onto the pitch. Completely different, completely different setups on both sides in terms of the quality they have. Um, so yeah, I think we huffed and puffed. We just didn't have enough. We didn't have enough, and you've got to score the first goal in games like this. You've got to, you've got to score the first, um, the first goal. Um, so there you go. Um, people in the comments, Tom Peters, you're making it look like you're talking to me. Are you talking to me, or are you talking to someone else? Uh, I don't know. Um, now it's disappointing. We're out the cup, and I know that's disappointing. We are very much a team. Still in transition, a club in transition. It's Carlo's first full season, and it's a season without fans. It's a season in the middle of a pandemic. Um, it's just mad. It is a mad season. I know it, the games against Newcastle and Burnley and, and um, Fulham, they're the ones who've killed us because we haven't got enough quality. We haven't got enough quality to break those sides down. But then the same can be said for us. We've gone to Old Trafford and got a point. We've gone to White uh, Tottenham's ground. We've gone to Old Trafford um, and grabbed something and gone to Leeds and won. And, and you know, you look, you know, they only have to cut out away games. We've done to other teams what teams have done to us. We, we need better players. Um, and that's it. That's it. Um, people just baffle me. People baffle me. People think because we got beat, we didn't try. I mean, we did try. We did try. We tried massively. The players, a lot of those players, had to work their socks off for 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 the whole game. And but you got we got beat by Man City. And you you what I'm gonna say to like is you're an idiot if you think Everton can compete with Manchester City over over the course of a season 
and you need luck and you need something to break to you and that never happened today and we also without some of our best players our most influential players Hamezes, the Cores, first choice goalkeepers you know and other players have gone through brick walls for this team this season um we as i said it means that match action we have to take these two weeks now use them as rest period for some of our players and we have to try and get five wins after the break to try and get us into europe and that's what that's that that's what that's now that's the season um that's the season now simple as that A poor, well, people are talking in the comments about having a poor season. Right, last season we finished 11th. I think the season before we finished 8th. If we could finish in the top 7 this season, then we've had a better season than we had last season. And then we'd have to, if we could finish higher than that next season, then that would be a better season. If we get more points this season, if we get to 60 points, then I think we've had a decent season. For me, that's 60 We've got to get 60 points. I keep on saying this. Um... What I don't know what people's expectations are of Everton. I really don't. So we'll see where we are at the end of the season. It's disappointing to go out the FA Cup to Manchester City, yes. Disappointing to be knocked out the League Cup on Man United, yes. But they're two better teams than us. Simple as that. The league table shows that. So um Yeah, but like we're not winning a trophy, are we? I know people say get, someone saying get once would give me a trophy. We're not winning a trophy, are we? That's we can't win a trophy. So now we've got to get top seven. You know, it's that's we're not winning a trophy. Manchester City will probably win both trophies, and they might win the European Cup. That's where we are in football right now. That's what the state of football is. So when we're not winning a trophy. So if we can't win a trophy, let's try and get Europe, right? And and that's that's what we can do. But people just baffle me. They absolutely baffle me by their expectations of this football club. When really, Carl, this is Carlo's first full season, and honestly, people baffle me. Yes, West Ham are having an outstanding season, but they're only a couple of points ahead of us, aren't they, in the league table? It's mad. People are mad. People, the way people view football is just weird. It's not an it's not a loser's attitude, is it? It my expectations don't mean anything. My expectations don't mean anything for this football club, right? My expectations don't uh, aren't a thing, right? My expectations don't go to, don't the team don't care about what my expectations. It's about their expectations, right? Now, the people at the club will probably expect to win trophies, but the only way that's going to happen is by buying football players. So you know in the summer, if we don't buy players, then I'll be my idea will be they don't care and they don't want to win trophies. So that comes down to them. But this football, this team, right? Right, I'm going to... This is some air-shattering news. This team is crap, Right? Look at the squad. It's crap. The players we have are average. Right? We have a centre-back playing at right-back. Right? We have no bench. So, they, that you've got to... We've got to go and get better players. Simple as that. We've just got to go and get better players. And when we, when we if we do, then you can raise that bar. You can raise that bar then. That's why Tottenham fans are kicking off because they've got um, Kane and they've got Son and they've got Bob Bailin. We we haven't got those players, so lower those expectations till the summer. Well, West Ham are having a really good season and fair play to them. Moyes has got them organised. Moyes has got them organised. So, <laughs> simple as that. Moyes has got them organised and they've won one more game than what we have, which is the game they beat us. So, 
Simple as that. But what's the ceiling for the two clubs? Is our ceiling higher than theirs? So, um, yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in the summer. But people can people if people think we should be doing better, then fine. That's up to you. Um, if you you know that's up to you. I'm I I I'm don't think we should because I actually I actually don't think we're that good. I've said this all season. I don't think we we've got that good a team or that good a squad. I think Carlo's tactical tactical nous in away games um, makes us better. Daniel, yes, I do think Leicester have got a better team than us. I think they've got a much better team than us. Um, so, Mark Reese, shut up! You sound like a bad tit. Oh my god. I think Leicester have got a much better team than us. They've got better players and they play better because the manager's come in and he's inherited better players and he's and they've brought in better players. That's um they've had a they've had a much better track record of bringing players in for a long time. They've took chances on players like Madison and Thielmans. Um And they they have made a team that makes better chances. Simple as that. Um, we have to buy better players, and and that's it. We lack creativity, we lack energy, and we've won games because of Carlo Ancelotti's tactical nous. Richard Leicester have recruited much better than us. I completely agree. Completely agree. They've recruited much better than us. Leicester have only been out the top four once in two years, and that was on the last day of last season. So that comes down to long term strategy, long term strategy of who the of who they buy. It's not about the manager; it's about who they've bought. They've been buying. Young up and coming players for longer than we have, and we've been buying dross. Simple as that. We've been buying dross, um, and that has to turn around. And I think it has turned around because when you see people like Godfrey, um, he's the kind of player we need going forward. He's the kind of player. If we buy more players like Godfrey, we'll do well. But we've bought far too many really, really bad players. Um, it's been terrible recruitment. We all know this. We've bought terribly and we've had to get rid of the bad players we've bought. And we've paid the price for that in the last 12 months, massively. So now we have to make sure we don't go after over-aged, overpriced players. And we try and bring in the, the young players. People like Allen, no problem. People like Decoy, no problem. Hammers, no problem. As long as they're supplemented with people like Godfrey and up and coming players like Unkunku, that's they the kind. That's what we have to do now this summer. Go out and buy like 20, 23 year old players. Um, get rid of people like Awobi. Get rid. Get rid of people like Andre Gomez. Um, if we can get players in their position, simple as that. Bring a right back in. Bring a winger in. Bring a centre midfielder in. Bring another centre forward in if they don't want King. Um, it comes down to buys now. Good, smart buys. So, it's not about the manager. Our manager and someone else's manager. It's about what's been going on behind the scenes. And we all know that we've been... Um, we've, we've been hamstrung by... Um, the players we bought under Walsh and under Koeman. And it's took us so long to be able to get rid of those players. And they've been a hindrance. And yes, there's been other bad buys like Delph and people like that. Um, so we'll wait, we'll wait and see. The summer, as I said, that's, the, that's for the summer anyway. There you go. Listen, these are my player ratings. You can agree, you can disagree. Um, that's fine. But it doesn't matter. It's just a YouTube video. Anyway, make sure to check out my instant match reaction. Make sure to check out all Baz's videos. Uh, we'll be doing the final word on Monday live on Patreon. Join us for that if you want. The link is in the description. 
and it's on the screen now. Congratulations to, I think, five people won £100 each on the Toffee Picks. Brilliant. Delighted for them. If you're one of them, drop us a little video or something, or or just let us let us know, and uh, we'll so we can use it in a video. And uh, yeah, see you later.